So, you know, we're, we're in the quantum realm. What does that even mean? You know, and so when we get down to the smallest energy scales, the size of an atom or maybe a few thousand atoms, you start to see quantum effects show up. Uh, now, is, does it look like that? We, we can't really see anything down that small. I mean, we see evidence of what's happening at that size scale, but we don't have a camera that small. We don't have, uh, you know, a spoon that small to go in and scoop up a single electron. Most of the things that we have that can see down that far is light. And so light interacting with matter is how we know quantum theory. And that's called spectroscopy. So this course is quantum mechanics and spectroscopy. So it's quantum mechanics is that study of the, the quantum theory of understanding nature down at its smallest size and length scales. But our probe for getting down that small is spectroscopy. So that's the main point. And so when you have matter or energy that doesn't interact with light, we call that dark. And so that's where dark matter and dark energy come from. It's just not something you can probe with spectroscopy. That doesn't mean you can't understand something about it, like a black hole. You don't get light out of a black hole, but you can see its effects gravitationally. And you can see gravitational lensing. So you can use light to understand gravity, even though light and gravity you know, have a strange relationship. Gravity doesn't absorb light or emit light, but it can bend light. And so there's some interesting tools that you can use. So in this course, my goal is to get you to understand how light and matter interact. And if you can understand that and understand the theory behind that, then there won't be a spectroscopic technique gets, that gets thrown at you that you can't understand. And so many of you are forensic chemistry majors. You want to end up in a, in a forensics lab. You're going to be using spectroscopic tools. What if they come out in 10 years with a new spectroscopic technique that none of us have ever heard of, none of your professors have ever heard of. That means you didn't get taught about it. How are you going to learn about that new spectroscopic technique? You're going to go back to the theory that you learned in this class. You say, well, I know about energy levels, and this is just another way to probe how matter interacts with light, and so I can understand that if I understand the theory. Okay. And so that's, you'll just understand the science of how how many of these instruments work. And so this quantum realm, we've, we're going to cover an enormous amount of, of energy and length scales in this course. Uh, really, if we go all the way to the spring semester, if you continue on in thermodynamics, then you will eventually, in the last section of the course, get to global consumption of energy. And so consumption number for the globe, for all of our activity, is 425 exajoules. Exa is 10 to the 18. That's a lot of energy. <laughs> okay. And so that's sort of the, one of the largest sort of energetic terms that we deal with on a daily basis or a yearly basis is how much energy is consumed by our economic and, and, uh, and life support uh, on this planet. Then we get down to something a smallest speck with good vision you can see maybe a hundred micron particle with good eyes and and that's about as small as you can see visually without magnification and then once we get below that we get into the nano scale and so we get down to about you know one nanometer that's about the diameter of a, a carbon 60 molecule so a buckyball little little soccer ball shape made out of carbon and so we're getting down to where you definitely see quantum effects. Uh, some of the smallest molecules, like hydrogen, are a tenth of a nanometer or one angstrom. So that's 10 to the minus 10 meters, and the energy down there is really very small. The bond energy for uh, a single hydrogen bond is 10 to the minus 21 joules. So global consumption of energy, 10 to the 18 joules, 10 to the minus 21, so a one with 20 zeros in front of it <laughs> in the decimal place. That's how many joules it takes to break a single hydrogen bond. Not very much at all. Now, when we talk about a mole of hydrogen bonds, now we're back up to a, a measurable, substantial amount of energy. Why is that? Because a mole is 10 to the 23 hydrogen molecules. 
And if it's just 10 to the negative 20 joules, and then now you multiply that by 10 to the 23, now you're up to 1,000 joules, something that's definitely measurable. But that just gives you an idea of how big a mole is. It can take that single little hydrogen bond energy and move it up to an energy that we can measure in the lab very easily. We can measure 1,000 joules very easily. Now, how to get through this course. This is a philosophical approach. Okay. How do you get through something like physical chemistry? And so here's a quote by da Vinci, one of my favorite quotes. He says, study without desire spoils the memory and it retains nothing that it takes in. You've had classes like this, right? High school, pick a topic, okay, pick a teacher, <laughs> right? You had no desire to learn that material and it was hard to remember the stuff, wasn't it? I mean, it was difficult. So you've got to find something inside of you that creates a desire for the material. All right. How can you do that? What is it about chemistry that causes you to desire to know more about it? It's your turn. Okay. What is it about chemistry that you like? Nobody. Okay, we're done. <laughs> I brought the dice too, so I can roll and we'll take volunteers that way. Let's do it, that'll be fun. Okay, so I got the roll here. Roll the dice, small numbers to multiply. One, two, three, and one. So Aurelia. Oh. <laughs> there you go. What is it about chemistry that you like? I don't know. I like understanding how like things work. Like I really like the mechanisms that we did last semester. So I okay. Really like yeah, that's cool. So the mechanisms really let you up. That's good. I like that too because you get to kind of map it out. They may or may not be right, but those are pretty yeah, right. I mean, they, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that too. All right, now pick a number between one and thirty-one. Three. Three. Okay. Yanira. Okay. Yeah. What is it you like about chemistry? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I put you on the spot, but that's okay. We're friends and we're family, so. I'll close the door. <laughs> What's that? Been expected eight in the morning. Yeah. Uh oh, my battery. What's going on? I hate to have a power plug, but if you don't use it. I like learning about the bonds. The bonds, yeah. like how the molecules are bonded together. Yeah. That's cool because we're going to learn a lot about that with vibrational spectroscopy. Because in infrared, that's how the molecules bonded together. There, you're looking at the vibrations of all the bonds. That's, and so that's going to be good. So focus on infrared. You're like, okay, here we go, the bonds. Pick a number between 1 and 31. Um, 28. 28. Okay, here we go. Marcus. Marcus. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Yeah, so just seeing that you sort of mentally or actually visually seeing down to the smallest things. We're going to get smaller than the particles in this class because we get to the wave functions. And so that's going to blow our minds about what the heck a wave function is. And I'm pretty excited about that. So, all right, one more. Pick a number between 1 and 31. 18. 18. All right. Megan, Megan, Megan. Okay, go for it. For me, it's more like my family's all in the sciences. So like okay. They're all in the biology and the physics part of science. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so I like being the only one that's studying chemistry because mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I can tell you this fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like something that I didn't grow up learning. So it's mm -hmm. actually new and actually exciting that I'm like, I don't know this. What's cool about it is between physics and biology, biology is sort of macro scale things. Physics can be the theory thing. You're kind of in between. It's a bridge between that. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, why do I like chemistry, especially PCHEM? Um, I've always grown up with Legos. Okay. And when, when I got to thinking about chemistry, I looked at the periodic table and I thought, that's crazy. I look at my Legos. I've got a bin full of you know, 
couple of thousand Legos. I mean, it, and they're all different shapes. If I had to categorize those shapes of the Legos, you know, the two by four blocks and the two by two blocks and the special pieces and all the little people and everything, uh, think of how many bins I'd have to have. I'd have to have a lot of bins. If I only put two by fours in one bin, four by fours in another bin, the little one pieces, then all the flat pieces, all the variety of those different pieces in Legos and all the things you can build with Legos. And then you look at the periodic table. There's only a hundred and so Legos. And there are really not that many bins, the groups. Group one, group two, there's 18 groups. And yet you can build the universe with it. That's incredible. I was talking about Legos, God's Legos, you know. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole universe is built out of a hundred, really, not, we don't even use these down here, you know. You might even say 88 or 90, maybe, you know, you get up to plutonium or something if we want to have nuclear power. And, and so 90, 95, 95 Legos. We have to have americium because that's our smoke detectors. Okay, so yeah, we'll stop at 95. 95 Legos, types of Legos, you can build the universe. Whoa, that's cool. So, if, so find something about the material that you love, because if you don't, it won't stick, okay? Trying to memorize stuff and learn things that you're really not interested in is misery, and we don't want that. We don't want misery, okay? So you, you, you always try to kind of, that's called metacognition. Think about thinking. You're like, why is this drudgery? What is it about this that I can get into? And if you find that thing, then, then you'll, it'll be much easier to retain the information, okay? You, you've got to sort of ignore society and say, no, it's okay to kind of geek out about this, okay? <laughs> That's okay. And, and so then you'll, you'll definitely benefit. <clears throat> now, here's the Matt Peavy, okay? I said, beware of the PKIM storytellers, okay? They will tell you how bad it is, how hard it is, how they struggled with it and everything like that. But that's human nature, right? Um, as soon as you learn that you got through with something, you're going to make it sound like it was the hardest thing you've ever done, even if it was kind of almost the hardest thing you've ever done. I'm not saying it's easy, but the storytellers are always going to make it sound worse than it really is, right? And, and so, and not only that, the storytellers will tell you things that I did in the past that I may have changed now, like the 10 pages per week. That's changed, okay? So when you hear about that, you're like, oh, he doesn't do that anymore, okay? We can still do that if that's what you want to do, but I've provided some flexibility, okay? So beware of the storytellers. What is this thing acting up? And then this is the, the key to success. I can or can't, I will or won't, <laughs> okay? So this block is the best. I can do it and I will do it. This one is not as good. Come on. I can't do it, but I want to, okay? I can, but I make poor decisions. <laughs> I can't and I won't, okay? I won't even try, you know? And so my goal is to make the wants up to the wills, okay? By talking about decisions, mentoring you, and so on, uh, and then also eventually moving you from the can't to the can. And so that would be my goal is to move everybody up into that upper left box so they can do it and they will do it. Okay, so let's look at the syllabus.